Preparing for Respectful Conversations. As we are aware, interpersonal communication is complex. Anticipating potentially difficult situations and responding effectively is at the core of every healthcare profession. Communication skills and techniques, such as the one presented in this video, equip us to respond effectively to conflict and to address anti-Indigenous racism. Have you ever witnessed discriminatory behavior either expressed by or towards a coworker? How did you react? Perhaps you froze or retaliated with an angry outburst. Afterwards, you might think of all the things you could have said and done to respond effectively. But by then, it may be too late. Here we present a mindful approach to speaking up respectfully in the moment or preparing for a respectful conversation at a later time, as well as present some in-the-moment phrases as additional communication tools. When another person's discriminatory comments or behavior triggers us, it puts our body into fight-or-flight mode, and we experience stress-related symptoms such as anger, raised temperature, sweaty palms, and tense muscles. When our bodies are in this state, it is difficult to make rational decisions and have a respectful conversation. This is because we are more likely to freeze or react from a place of anger rather than a place of curiosity. The key to having respectful conversations is being calm and present. The STOP practice is a mindful way of bringing oneself into the present moment before reacting to hearing and or seeing another individual's discriminatory words or behavior. STOP is an acronym for STOP, take a breath, observe, and proceed. This acronym makes it easy to remember in the moment. How long will this technique take? As little as 30 seconds to 10 minutes, depending on the situation and time you have available. What do you need to prepare? Practice this technique as often as possible on your own or with a friend or family member so that it's easier to do in the moment when you witness or are confronted with a difficult interpersonal situation. Here's an example. Let's say a coworker has said something offensive or derogatory to another coworker in front of you that makes you angry. The first step is to stop. Before you do or say anything, stop or pause for a moment and bring the stop practice into your awareness. The second step is to take a breath. Notice your breath as it enters and leaves your nose. Notice the rhythm and pace. Is it slow or fast and shallow? Then take a couple of slow breaths in and out through the nose. This is an important step to connect with yourself as the breath anchors us in the present moment. The third step is to observe. Without judgment, notice your environment, the sounds, smells, and sights, any physical sensations in your body, your thoughts, i.e. judgments, biases, beliefs, or fears, and your feelings. This is another opportunity to check in with yourself before doing or saying anything. The fourth step is proceed. With greater awareness and from a calmer place, you can decide what you need to say or do next with courage. Remember that silence can enable discriminatory environments, interactions, behaviors, and attitudes to continue. We have a collective responsibility to speak out against any type of discriminatory behavior. Some in the moment responses that you could rehearse and memorize are as follows. One, appeal to a person's values. Anna, I know you to be a fair and respectful person. I'm surprised to hear you make a derogatory racist comment like this. Two, describe the behavior or words rather than labeling the person expressing the behavior a racist or any other charged term. You might say something like, Tim, what I heard you say is that all Indigenous people don't care about their health. Or, Tim, you're characterizing all Indigenous people in a derogatory way. Is that what you meant? Three, express how the discriminatory behavior or words make you feel. When you speak or behave in this way, it makes me feel exceptionally uncomfortable, sad, frustrated. Four, draw clear boundaries. We can't change another person's behavior, but we can decide what we will and won't tolerate and what the consequences are in allowing the offensive behavior to continue. Examples of effective responses may be, please don't tell racist jokes around me. We value diversity and respect here. Or you might add, 
If you continue to speak in this disrespectful way, I'm going to have to ask you to leave my office, the meeting, the building. Five, respond to microaggressions with equal courage. Rebecca Clay, 2017, defines microaggressions as the brief statements or behaviors that intentionally or not communicate a negative message about a non-dominant group. An example could be telling an indigenous person receiving their doctorate how amazing it is as an indigenous person that they've come this far. An example of an effective response to a microaggression might be, what you said just now made me feel very uncomfortable. I'm wondering how you might feel if someone came up to you and said something similar. Deciding to remain silent. If you feel unsafe speaking out in the moment to your manager or supervisor for fear of negative repercussions, document your experience, enlist witnesses, and discuss the situation with your human resources advisor. Remember that it is important to practice and memorize some of these approaches. Initially, this may feel awkward, as this may be a new skill. In time, you will find asserting yourself and speaking up in difficult situations involving conflict and addressing anti-Indigenous racism will become second nature. <laughs> <laughs>